Today's topic is false Dimitri the first. False Dimitri? False Dimitri. Um, I was kind of expecting you to pick up on the first because as it turns out, and although we're only covering one, there was four of them. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, the first kind of does like uh, allude to there being more than just one. Anywho, let me get us started real quick. So, the story starts in, in 1591. Um, 1591, Ivan the Fourths, who you would know as Ivan the Terrible. Yeah, I remember him. Mm. Yeah, I'm He's sure. He's a good guy, yeah. Yeah. Well, Long he didn't time get friend. on his bad side. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's a shame that every side was his bad side. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently not under his feet. Anyhow... One of his sons and the mother to said son get exiled to a place called Uglik. And I'm just going to apologize now for every mispronunciation. Okay, I'm trying to speak Polish and fucking Russian. There's just no fucking way. The simplest name in here is Adam, and I'm pretty sure that's not his actual name. <laughs> so, Ivan the Terrible Son, alongside his mother, is sent into exile to Uglik in 1591. Now, this son was named Dimitri, right? And supposedly, according to official witness statements, Dimitri, at age eight, had a seizure and died. So why do we even bring him up? Because he's gone. Well, he also might have been stabbed in the throat, according to other witnesses. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, if anything's gonna give you a seizure, dude. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Like this little sharp object to the throat. It was nothing really, but then he had a seizure and died. So, deferring guilt. After that, nothing really seems to have come from that <laughs> until 1603. Now, in 1603. A Polish nobleman by the name of Adam. <laughs> Adam Wisn Wisniaukek. Uh there you go. Have, have uh, fun. Uh, Good luck. Try to pronounce that. Yeah, yeah. Visnawiki? Maybe? I don't know. It sounded better than whatever the hell I said. <laughs> but he makes a miraculous discovery, okay? Dimitri is alive in his employ. <laughs> really? How does he find this out? How does he know this? How does he know it's just not some dude going, yeah, that was me? <laughs> well, you see, here's the thing. My suspicion here, it's not specified how he knows this, but I suspect, because in 1603, you are having... And this will be addressed later as well. But you are having the time of troubles in Russia, which is basically a like, succession crisis. So this dude is like eighteen at this point. If it's this dude, oh <laughs> which, yeah, yeah, which, he's, which, not, which, he's got which, no angle going. Which on I all. highly doubt. So, so here's the thing, right? In Russia right now, you have the time of troubles, which is a succession crisis. Um, we'll touch on that later. Okay. Because that does become important to our story. So, so my personal theory, because it's not specified how this is discovered, right? They did a DNA test. Man. Is I'm gonna guess Adam was just looking for a justification to go eat some Russian land while they were in civil war, basically. Oh, so Dimitri, so wait, Dimitri, Adam, and Dimitri too. Well, so well, maybe maybe Adam was like, I know. Right, Dimitri, so, come here. So but my name is Raul. <laughs> <laughs> no, you are not Dimitri. Dimitri. That is exactly <laughs> what I suspect happened. <laughs> right, because as far as we know, there's a few theories on who the real Dimitri is, but it's we're pretty damn sure he's not actually <laughs> Dimitri. So. So, historians reckon 
and the most commonly suggested and accepted is was he was a monk. Um, now he could have been a Lithuanian monk. Who was a monk? Dimitri. Well, false Dimitri, as we shall now call him, or FD, if we're feeling really hip about it. False Dimitri. Okay. But so we suspect false Dimitri might have been a monk. That's pretty much what everyone agrees to. Yeah, but wasn't he an Adam's employee? He was an Adam's employee. However, you would, in those times, it was not uncommon for really rich people to have their own priests, right? Oh. Yeah. So he had an 18-year-old telling him how to live his life right. 18-year-old. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> 18-year-old with some serious quotation marks to that. So it's, it's suspected he was either a Lithuanian monk. He might have been a monk that um, was serving the Romanovs at the time, right? Um, which I don't understand how that one really works, but it was in the research, um, which, by the way, I'll post all the links to. Um, I did manage to save all my links. I'm not putting that shit in MLA, MLA format. Like, if you're that worried about it, you can do it for me. But, um, so he could have been a priest or a monk. Um, it's also suggested he was just some random Polish peasant that Adam pulled off the street one day. <laughs> Which I really, I just gotta love. Hey, Dimitri. My name is not Dimitri. Well, now you're Dimitri. You're coming with me. You're going to go be the czar. <laughs> you're going to go be the czar. <laughs> right? Haven't you always wanted to be a czar? What's a czar? I just wanted to sell my pigs this morning. <laughs> so. I'm trying to panhandle here, man. <laughs> Can't you see I'm hustling? Another theory is that he was the king of the previous Polish... He was, the, he was the bastard of the previous Polish king. Right? Which was King Stepan. Now, Poland, one thing to consider at this point in time is Poland is the Polish-Lithuania Commonwealth currently. Which, um... I'll pull up real quick. Okay, this is much more what I expected. So... If I recall about the Polish-Lithuania Commonwealth, I should have done some research into it. Uh, I want to see it. There we go. That's kind of something, right? That would have been the land region we're talking about. Hmm. And if I recall, though I'm not entirely sure, we could Google it real quick, maybe a wiki. But um, the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth was the result of um, basically the same thing that created Austria-Hungary. Right? What is that, Continental Drift? <clears throat> no, it was, um, a, like, that might have been con, con no, it's a union thing, right? It's, 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 it's one dude coming into control of two countries via inheritance, ah. right? So, like, I'm just gonna, real quick, we're gonna hop over to Wiki. I'm not saying ever trust Wiki, but for the purposes of this, like, uh, was a bi-confederate state, some kinds called the Federation of Lithuania, and Poland ruled by a common monarch in a real union. So there you go. Mm, I was correct. I believe. Anyhow, heading back to it. Um, so what, he jumped the borders, took the Polish queen, and they said, this can never get out. And... No, it was probably like it was probably the result of a death, more than likely. I, I, we could Google it, but it's kind of not relevant, and we're getting really sidetracked. <laughs> but I reckon it was more of a thing where somebody died, and their daughter was next in line to inherit, and therefore it went to him or their kid. Right. So this is where Dimitri comes in. So Dimitri comes in as he might have been the son of the king of the Polish Co Lithuanian Commonwealth. This is false Dimitri? This is false Dimitri, yes. False Dimitri. He could have been the bastard son of King Stepan, who was king of the Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth. Make his initials FD. Yes, I would yeah, make if I put an apostrophe in between them. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho. Moving on. Which I suspect he was. <laughs> 
<laughs> at the end of this. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Any any way you sliced it, though, he was most certainly not the real Dimitri. <laughs> right? So, either way, after somehow convincing who I believe, it's not really specified who. So, like, for so for my research, it could have been some random lady. <laughs> but I highly suspect it's the real mother, right, of Dimitri. Gets so now we have mom and false mom? No, possibly. <laughs> I'm just going to call it real mom because of her actions later. Okay. But they basically, Adam basically somehow convinces her to declare him as the real Dimitri. Publicly. But was she the mother of the real Dimitri? I suspect... But she might not have been. It's not made clear through my research, which again, to be it might fair, have been wench. Yes, again. What, what art thou up to? <laughs> again, my research was not the most solid. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't go looking for first-hand accounts right. or second-hand accounts. I was definitely like, I was definitely getting third-hand things. <laughs> All right. So this could be a horrible game of telephone. Just notice. Just note that. <laughs> All right. Uh, to anyone actually watching this, if you want to know more, I, I do highly suggest digging deeper into it. I mean, just this surface level dig completely spun my head around on what this whole situation was. Because <laughs> I, I knew it was effed. I knew the ending of the story was effed. I just didn't imagine the beginning, middle, <laughs> and end were all this effed. <laughs> but anyways, somehow he is declared by some woman... Dimitri's mom, maybe, maybe not we'll Dimitri's mom. mom. At this point. Yes. To to be the legitimate heir of Ivan the Terrible. Wait, I thought he was Dimitri. Dimitri, yes. Dimitri is Ivan the Terrible's son. His second son, I believe, by a bastard. Right? So it's not a legitimate heir. He was never a legitimate heir? He was a bastard. Always. He was always a bastard. Even when he had that spasm or yes, whatever. Even, even eight-year-old was... I think a bastard. I might be wrong. He, he was either a bastard or a second child. And for some reason, they got exiled, right? Him him and his mom. It was a medical procedure. That's <laughs> what it was. Right? This kid won't stop C's. Look at him. He's going nuts. He was, Here, I know what to do. Give me that knife. <laughs> <laughs> Look, success. <laughs> Good thing malpractice isn't a thing yet. <laughs> Unless someone finds out. <laughs> All right, no, anyway, okay, so, so malpractice so, actually so she, on a peasant, I don't believe at, well, probably at that time, because we were starting to get real doctors in. This is post-Renaissance, obviously. Um, I have to suspect we're heading into the, we're getting close to the Napoleonic area, so. Uh, Con continuing on, though. So, so. Little boy seizes, ten years later he shows back up. They find a woman who we're calling mom, who says, yes, that's the real Dimitri. Yes. So false Dimitri is, is now the real, real Dimitri, Dimitri, who was probably a bastard, maybe a second son. <clears throat> that follows? Yep. Okay. So, <clears throat> now he's legitimate. And Adam takes him to the current king of Polish-Lithuania, now known as Poland, for the rest of this, because I refuse to say Polish-Lithuania one more time. <laughs> so he takes him to the king of Poland, Poland, Sigismund III. Okay? Who? Sigismund III. You're stuttering. Sigismund III. Really? Yes. Alright, go figure. And I'm going to guess he, at this point, whether this is true or not, sees his chance. Because he's looking at the time of troubles in Russia. And now he's looking at a legitimate king to put on the throne of Russia. And have this nice ally sitting right next to him. Right? Who's going to favor Poland over Russia. Right? You mean Lithuania. 
Polish Lithuanian. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I was getting confused. All right. We're just going to refer to them as Poland from here on out. So Lithuania on the east, Poland on the, the right. They're both Poland. The left. We're, we're, consi- the... we're just calling the Polish-Lithuania Commonwealth Poland. Yeah, but it doesn't make any sense to have a king want to put a king on a throne so well, that he'll be favorable to the... Him. Like... What do you mean? It makes perfect if sense. If it's the same country... Well, no. He wants to make Dmitry Tsar of Russia. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah, that was, that didn't come through. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so no. Sigismund, I'm, I'm guessing Sigismund sees this and he's like, listen, I can put this Polish dude, or Lithuanian dude, doesn't really matter, they both like me, <laughs> onto the seat of the Tsar, and he's just going to be my little puppet in Russia, right? Right. Now, he's not the only one who has this idea. Because uh, raging hormones don't get you far, okay? Because it's somehow through this, and they start gaining support, that Dimitri, or FD, <laughs> Wait, meets... Wait, but he's real Dimitri now. He's re- we'll call him, we're just going to call him Dimitri That's from so here funny. on out. We're just calling him Dimitri from here on out, <laughs> Okay. Yeah, welcome to history. Names are either impossible to remember, or there's too many of the same dude. <laughs> yeah, but you can't really, right? Because now you're bestowing some, like, true commonality between the two. Right. Which may not be true. So, false Dimitri meets the brother-in-law of one Marina Manishts. And that's the best I'm doing on that. All right. She is the daughter of two noble houses of Russia. Perfect. Well, Dmitri seems to think so because he starts simping after her like no one's freaking business. <laughs> to the point where if he does end up on the, on the chair, it is reasonable to argue that he'll be toothless and powerless. Basically, <laughs> right? That is really going to be Marina on the throne more than him <laughs> right. on the throne. There is there is that argument to be had as well, which I'm sure had to be running through Sigismund's head. They get married in um, they get married in 1605. Oh, they do get married. Yeah. So basically. Oh. Under a whole bunch. See, I was waiting for the whole Haunted Mansion angle where they kill her for his good. No. Master. They mar- She'll survive. She'll outlive him. Okay. But she marries him in 1605, and it was supposedly under a shit ton of conditions <laughs> that were like not... a serious prenup? Pro- yeah, basically... No, you may not have the country. (laughs) That is ours. (laughs) So, I mean, either way, they get married in 1605. Meanwhile, jumping back a little bit to the time of Troubles, Russia, in 1598, the legitimate heir to Ivan the Terrible, Tsar Fyodor, dies, and his brother-in-law, Boreas Gundavun, Gundunov, Gundunvin, good enough. Did he? Good enough. <laughs> Did he also have a seizure in a uh, um medical? I didn't procedure? look into it that much. I just know he dies. <laughs> um, so his brother-in-law comes into power. The thing is, it's his brother-in-law, right? Right. He has no legitimacy, really. Right. So you know, there starts to become this struggle between a bunch of factions to install a new czar. Right? So Poland's looking at that and they have good old Dmitri sitting here. Right? Now that he's with Marina and riding the boat. That means he also has that means he also has the Cossacks and a few Russian noble houses on his side. So the Polish begin, what I find out, is the Polish-Muscovite War of 1605 to 1618. 
For why? Because they want to put him on the on uh, the Russian throne. As well, a, why does that require? A, well, who? Okay, I know we know who the Polish are. But who are the freaking Muscovites? The Russians. Oh. I kind of feel like this isn't going to work so well if you have to fight a war over it first. Well, here's the thing. <laughs> they don't have to. <laughs> of course not. You never have to. <laughs> well, no. In this case, they legitimately do not have to. <laughs> so before they ever get to Moscow... Who's they? The Polish and Dmitry. As well as the Cossacks. Before they ever get oh, the... The army, you mean? Yes. Before mm. they ever get to Moscow. So this could be viewed as an invasion. Yes. You might... Yeah. Well, maybe a war. <laughs> <laughs> right? So, Even though we're just taking this fucking dork over to be, become czar. So here's the thing. And this is where it gets, like, what the fuck? Like, even worse. Boris dies. Who? Boris? Boris dies. And all This is of... the dude who wants to put him on the throne. No, Boris is the dude who took the, took the throne, the brother-in-law of Ivan the Terrible's child, Fyodor. Yeah, Polish. No, 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 Russian. In Russia. So, in Russia... Boris is the czar. Boris is the czar. Oh, yeah, okay. We are attacking Boris. Here's the thing. Before we get to Boris, Boris dies. <laughs> okay. So, now the most effed up thing in this whole story happens. I thought it was what happens at the end. But no, this is it. <laughs> All of Boris' supporters turn around, murder the rest of his family... The and fuck, and then welcome Dmitri into the fucking <laughs> Moscow with open arms, <laughs> right? So here he is. Yeah, this there's a fucking legacy for you. A bloodless conquest, <laughs> <clears throat> or at least so I suspect. I do not believe there was any ba battles on the way to Moscow, but I might be wrong. This was on Dmitri, but, not the Muscovite War. <laughs> you know, all of Boris's family, kind of, you know, well, dying. Yeah, but you know, they were probably medical procedures like last time <laughs> so in 1605 he gets crowned sorry and for 10 months everything went well <laughs> everything was great but he's starting to encounter two problems the first of which is far more manageable than the second the first problem is his new wife wants to take orthodox russia and make them catholic is this his new wife or his new new wife well, he's only had one wife. Marina, right? Marina. So Marina. Marina. By the way, she wants is... to make Orthodox Catholicism. Yes, the in Russia. Religion. What is the current religion? Orthodoxy. So she wants to make she wants to install Christianity into Russia, which is currently Orthodox. Okay. This will go well. Thankfully there's not enough time for that. <laughs> but yeah, that's creating some tension. In, in, in the palace. Right? Problem number two. Mom he returns. Isn't getting no, mom returns. <laughs> mom returns. And goes, yeah, no, that was never my son. Have a nice day, motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she showed up and she's like, you know, you know that payment you made to me last time? Yeah, um, I'm empty. Yeah, I'll, Check yeah, bounced. Yeah. Either, either pay me or shit's gonna go bad. <laughs> Oh, don't have any money. So it's with those two things that a man named Boyer, or I think Boyer might be his title, but I'm not sure. Boyer Vasily Shayosky arrives. And he goes, yeah, no, fuck you. Get the fuck out. And in on the... And then on the date... May 17th, 1606, he leads a coup and kills Dmitri. Damn. Did not see that coming. 
Somehow, <laughs> as fucked up as the story's been, I was going to say, maybe he got abducted by aliens or something, but he didn't get killed. No, he gets he gets killed in a coup by by Boyer Vasily Shayusky. Um, some people called it, also say it's an assassination by some of my... No, it was a medical procedure. <laughs> <laughs> um, however, it seems to be a coup situation because some say there was actually a battle that occurred. Yeah. Between the two. Um, either way, Dmitri is executed. His body is paraded around, around Moscow. And one of the interesting things to note, though, is even though the people know it's not the real Dmitri, <laughs> there's actually quite a few of them who are, like, kind of, like, pissed off about it. <laughs> right? Just, just, just a thing of note that I noted in my research. Dimitri the Tsar, he was a great Tsar. Look at what you've done. <laughs> Ten months in office. <laughs> but yeah, there was, there was apparently quite a few of the peasantry that was quite upset about it. Right? Um, but anyways, after parading his body around, he, he, um... So when was this... This was in 1606. It's the May of 1606. So has the war already started? Yes. What, what was that when they took Dimitri? To, yes. So, and, but nothing has really happened. Not he, really. He got installed as czar. Everybody was happy. It was He's all good. Been there for about ten months. Yeah. Well, almost everybody was happy. There was one pissed off motherfucker. And right. And. He kills him because he's not legitimate and takes over. Um, oh, that's right, because mom showed up and said, fuck you. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So there was a bunch of piss, pissed off people because his wife was trying to convert everyone to, or, to freaking Christianity. <laughs> and, and, and mom showed up and went, that's not my kid. <laughs> Destabilized everything. Pretty much. Because, like you said, I guess her wage didn't come in on time. <laughs> something. And so, Boyer shows up, kills him. And Marina continues on. So, Boyer becomes czar. And that situation stays destabilized till 1618, when a new czar is finally found that everybody's happy with. And ultimately, Poland... Kind of wasted his time. Uh, he and like, seriously. <laughs> um, Marina goes on to try again. <laughs> Literally, with Dimitri II, another false star. <laughs> <laughs> hey, psst, psst. remember that Dimitri we <laughs> sent to Russia? He's not dead. <laughs> the coup never happened. <laughs> <laughs> it was misinformation. <laughs> <laughs> That's fake news. <laughs> Somebody fact check this. <laughs> <clears throat> so, I'm, I'm skipping ahead a little here. Well, I'm going to jump back to Dimitri real quick to finish up what happens to, well, his body. His body gets cremated. Stuffed in a cannon <laughs> and shot back towards Poland. Oh, that was him. <laughs> yes, that was him. <laughs> I discovered so much about this story. All I knew was the freaking cannon. <laughs> and that's what brought me here. We will shoot you back to the country that you came from. <laughs> Free airfare. <laughs> Alright, so anyways, Marina would go on to try and regain her station alongside Dimitri II. An act that ultimately got her thrown in jail where she died at the age of 28. I'm sure no medical procedures were involved. <laughs> um, Damn. How long was she in there? You don't know until she died. I know. <laughs> you can't. <laughs> well, it couldn't have been more than 28 years. So. <laughs> um... And Poland goes on to fight the Polish Muscovite War till 1618. And that is the story of the false Dmitri I. <laughs> and not last. <laughs> At least not for Marina. <laughs> oh, man. Thoughts? Opinions? That's messed up. Like, 
Huh, why are you even fighting this war? Obviously nothing was actually happening and everybody was, well, like we said, like most people were okay. Except for Boris or whatever his name was. Was that his name, Boris? Boyer. Boyer? Boris? Eh. Boris was... Name. Boris was... The one who just died. <laughs> who, like, dropped... Oh, that's right. Yeah, because he got... No, who was... Oh, well, Boris was the one who dropped... Dr dropped dead, like... Died. In the most convenient time possible. <laughs> and the other guy was Boyer? Was Boyer, yeah. So it's really his fault. Re yeah, re realistically, it's them getting pissed off because, like, he wasn't the real czar. I mean, I, so I highly suspect that would be used against him much later. <laughs> but, like, here, here's the thing, right? I suspect the reason that it wasn't as big of a deal as it was, kind of, like, made out by Boyick, like, why some of the people in Moscow, like, still notably, like, were upset, is because he might not have been the real son but even so, he was there, and everybody, I have to assume, must have realized it. he was just a fucking puppet for Marina. Hmm. Right? Like, I had to imagine every Russian person just knew that. Like, yeah, no, this, this dude's an idiot. <laughs> like. <laughs> um, but... We'll Google real That's quick. kind of crazy. Oh, like, literally, you can look it up. Okay, what's on his nose? We're just gonna hop here because I'm guessing. Nope, nope, nothing. They have fucking nothing. That's impressive. Did that say. F yeah, look, 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 dude. That, that was the procedure they were trying to. Get rid of the mole? Get rid of the mole. Uh. How nice of you not to paint that out. Yeah, false Dimitri. <laughs> Ooh. Nope, Pope John. According to legend. So. That means it's not documented, dude. That means that, uh, yeah, that's gonna be fun to freaking research. Yeah, fact check this. Yeah, it's gonna be a fun one. Um, woman who reigned as Pope for two years during the Middle Ages, her story first appeals in the Chronicles of the 13th century and subsequently spread throughout Europe. The story was widely believed for centuries. But most of our modern scholars regard it as fictional. So, yeah, I mean, that might be a fictitious thing. Uh, but that might, I'm going to look into that further, but that might be next. But, uh, yeah, I could, you know, like, see them trying to install her. Who's going to vote for me? Like, you look like a woman. She really like, don't judge me. <laughs> okay, I guess you're a man. Just a feminine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, especially in those freaking times, man. But no, I'm I'm mostly gonna be looking for something just kind of straight up as utterly ridiculous. Um, not entirely sure where to go next. So if there's any suggestions, hit us up. Uh, other than that, uh, I guess thanks for listening, and I'm going to close OBS.